Odokis and Dilip here about another OBS tutorial and today we're looking at outlines. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to add outlines to different sources that you've got inside of OBS. So if you just want a webcam border for instance, you don't need to create an overlay or anything like that. You can just use effects directly inside of OBS. And the benefit of doing this kind of thing, it just means that you can actually configure different sizes without having to create a brand new overlay for every single time you want to change the size of your webcam or something like that. It'll automatically stay to, to most sizes apart from the basic way that I'll show you right at the end okay so let's just get into it put your rug over the stone let's go Right, so the first method I'm going to show you is well I'm showing you the better ways first and the simpler option at the end just because if you can use the better methods, they are completely customizable and it will just save you a lot of headache along, along the way if you want to change certain elements. So the first one we're going to look at is the OBS shader filter method. Uh, this plugin by CERN, honestly, is amazing. It's the best shader filter plugin out there. It, it, it just works. It's good. We just need to hit go to download just here and we're going to get that installed. We should be able to see that now in our folder just here. We can jump into this OBS Studio folder and you'll see data and OBS plugins. We're just going to copy them, go to the C drive, go to the program files or program files 86. Mine's in program files. We'll go down to OBS Studio just there and we're just going to paste it directly into there. Mine's going to ask me if I want to replace. I've already got mine installed ready to go, so I'm not going to do that now. Just get your, it'll ask for admin privileges, all that. Just say yes, 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 and then restart OBS. So if OBS is already open, you'll have to restart it. So we're going to close that down and jump into OBS. So here we go. If you see my other previous video about drop shadows, we're on the same canvas because I'm filming it on the same day. I usually do all my videos in one day. Come at me. So we've got a, a kind of just basic image, as you can see here, video capture. We're going to use this as our webcam template. And I'm just using this green screen so you can see all the things that are happening. So the first method, we are using that shader filter. So we go to filters now, press the plus sign and add a user defined shader. If you're not seeing that, it means you've not installed shader filters correctly. So just go back through that setup process. So I'm just going to call this outline, press OK, load shader from text file. And we're going to look for, where is it? Border dot shader. So we turn that on and you're not going to see any changes at all because we've got this red, um, see the surrounding area around our source, this red outline. That is the edge of the source. So we need to tell uh, the shader filter that we want to go past the edge of the source. So if I say change these to 100, you see what's happening? It's starting to add an outline. Oops, I changed the bottom one to 1000. So we've got a really thick border now. As you, as you are seeing so depending on what we change these pixels on the edge to say if we change i'll change them to 25 for this tutorial so i've changed them all to 25 we've got a semi-thin outline all the way around our source and it's not impeding on what's inside the source because we've added extra pixels to the outside we've got different settings if we scroll down in there if I don't scroll in that box that'd be really good and we've got the border color just here so we can change the color of the border say we want it to be i don't know this nice maroony sort of color we change it to that we could change it to black if we want to you could change it to bright blue you can change it to any color under the rainbow this nice pink color the andy lippy pink there we go and as you can see we've got an outline and we can move that around all that jazz and happy days so another thing you're going to probably ask me is cropping it. So if I crop the angles, I'm holding down the alt key here. You can see that it's not bringing the border along with it. So let me uncrop all that. What we can do is right click and go to filters again. And we're going to press the plus sign and add a crop slash pad filter. So say if I chop down the left hand side by 500, the, the right by uh, 500 as well. Oops, 500 top by uh, 200. And I'll leave the bottom at zero. You can see it's not brought the, the border with it again. Look, we can only have that border on the bottom line. But if we change the order of the effect filters just here, move that to the top, you'll see now I've got a border around my squarish looking cam, which that's how you can move stuff around. I can resize it as well. And the borders will stay with it like so, which is really, really handy. 
So then the next method I'm going to show you is using another plugin called Stream Effects. If you're not using this already, please get it downloaded. All links in the description as always. We just go up and press go to download page just here. This will take us to a GitHub page. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see all the different versions here. It's available for Mac, Ubuntu, uh, Linux, uh, Windows, all that jazz. Use the exe file because it'll make sure you've got all the prerequisites. If you are having trouble installing it with exe, feel free to download the zip file and install it the same way that I showed you how to do the shader filter plugin. You should have both of these installed because they are both so useful if you want to take your streams to the next level. So you can tell you've got that all installed because you'll see a pop-up window and you'll also see stream effects just up here as you can see there. That means you've got stream effects all installed. So we're going to right click on the source again and go to filters and we're going to add in a crop or pad because we need to tell stream effects that we want to add something to the outside of the source. So a crop slash pad, if I type in 100 say on each one of these sides, you'll see it is cropping into the image. But if I use a negative number, like so, you can see we're getting this extra portion all the way around our source just now. So we can see we've got something around the edge there. So that means we've got kind of have a little bit of room, wiggle room to play around with. So we're going to add the border now. So if we press the plus sign again and go to SDF effects, if you've not got that, it means you've not installed stream effects correctly. Press OK. Uh, my computer might lag a little bit in the video, so apologies. I've got a new GPU on its way. It's taking its time, though. Uh, we're going to press outline. And you'll see it's already added an outline to the edge just here. I'm going to leave the alpha on 100 because we can make it transparent if we want to. Let's make it a little bit thicker with the width. So you can see increasing the width just here. So we've got quite a big outline. And we can do offset as well. So if we want it to kind of come in a little bit or on further out or something like that, we can change where we want the, the outline to be. So it kind of crops it in a little bit as well. It's up to you what you want. I usually just leave it on zero. Uh, the sharpness as well. This depends on if you want it to... It, I think it's if, it, it, if it's really sharp, that it impedes more on your graphics. So sometimes bringing that scale down can really help. Or some, it just depends on your GPU, really. I usually leave it somewhere in the middle where it's not too sharp and it's not usually about 50. And we can change the color of the border as well. So we can change it to a pink, like so. Change it to any color we like, just like that. And again, if we start cropping the edges of this, the border is not going to go with it. So we can add in a, another crop again if we wanted to. And if I move that up to, to the top, because we've kind of got two crops going on. So I'm going to add in this crop of 100 to 100 and you can see it looks kind of weird when it's changing but if I move that up now you can see if I turn that crop off, turns that crop off, turn it on, turn it on and we've got these outlined now and as you can see it's trying to actually follow the source and this is something cool that you can add. So I'm going to delete uh, everything that's on this source right now and I'm going to show you another method of making it so it tracks the source in the middle like this and the outline always follows it depending on if you resize it or something like that without having to use crops. So we're going to use a nested scene. I'm going to create a new scene and do it called outline cam scene. So if you've not seen my video on nested scenes, definitely take a look because this is how you can really take your stream to the next level. So we're going to add that camera source to, to here and make sure we delete that on the old scene because we don't want that camera source on there. We only want it on this one. I'm going to resize it. So it is probably just, I'm going eh, I'm to say a little bit smaller than the screen, just like so, and center it with control D. And what I can do now is add the outline onto this scene because we've got an edge around the scene that's not being used, isn't there? All this black space. This is actually transparent space. So if I press filters on the scene, press the plus sign, add my SDF effects or the shader filter method, press outline, add the outline in. You're probably not going to see much. So I'm going to use a, a red color for this one so you can see it on both screens. I'm going to increase the width to the maximum value just so we can definitely see it. And I can change the offset if I wanted to. I'm just going to leave it all as standard like that. And I go back to the just chatting screen that I've got and add the scene. Sorry, it does get quite complicated. And as you can see, we've got it here. I can resize this, but if I crop this, it's not doing anything. But if I actually make that full size to this screen here and adjust it on this uh, actual scene on its own, you'll see it's looking quite trippy. But if I bring these in, I can't even see these boxes. 
move that into the middle. It's in the middle on this scene, just here. So a good way to edit this is in studio mode. We can start moving things around. In studio mode, it means that you can edit whilst being able to move. So you can see what's happening here. Hold down the Alt key and I can crop. So the outline is always going to follow exactly where we want it to be, which is really useful. So turn studio mode on, or off, sorry, and we've got our just chatting screen and we're a small little uh, box right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that has probably blown your mind on that one. Definitely check out my video on nested scenes. And now let me show you the easiest method of doing a outline. So the easiest method and the less intrusive method for your CPU and GPU is to just add a color source. So grab a color source again uh, in here. Color source, we'll just call it color source 2, press OK. And I'm going to change the color of it to black so we can see what's going on with it. And I'm also going to make sure it's the same width and height um, dimensions as my video capture device. And the one that I'm using at the moment is 2560 by 1440. Even though it's not that size on the canvas because I've changed the size of it. What I can do is right click on the video capture device, go to transform, press copy tra transform, right click on the color source, transform, paste transform. And now both of these are exactly the same size. Something really useful that you can do is make sure that you change your transforms to position alignment to be center. Okay, This is really going to help this situation. So now that it's centered, we've moved it all the way up here. But if I press Control D, that'll center it into the middle of the screen. If I press the source, there we go. And I'm going to do the exact same for the color source. So edit transform, center, positional alignment, close that down and press Control D. And now they're both in the middle like so. So as I start moving this one down underneath so our camera's on top now i'm going to lock the camera in place so once i lock that camera source i can then press Control e on the color source that we want to change and just increase the size a little bit so if i increase that by 10 so that'll be uh, 14 in fact no i'll increase it by 20 so it'll be 48 and then i'll also do that to the y-axis so 20 and you can see we've now got an outline with those two sources uh, and that has now been locked in place the issue is, if I move one around, so if I move the camera, it's not going to follow it like we did the previous method. But at least you've kind of got a nice minimalistic outline, which then you can change the color of, obviously, uh, using using this tool. Change it to red if we want to, like that. And you can see we've got that outline. Another thing you can do is add more filters on top. So if I go to filters, add a color correction, for instance, I could turn the opacity down a little bit so it's semi-see-through. Then you can create different effects with it as well. Uh, they are all the methods of doing outlines. There probably are some more as well and different things that you can use like a gra gradient source plugin and animate them as well. So that is a video that I'm going to do in the future, show you how to do animations uh, without having to create overlays. Really useful knowledge to know. If this video has helped you out, please press the subscribe button and consider joining on Patreon or the channel membership to help support the content. Uh, we do a ton of videos here and it takes me a long time to do them. So hopefully I helped you guys out. All right. We rock the stone. I'll see you in the next one. Much love. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.